what is going on Pokemaniacs with Surging Sparks taking off with 151 with Prismatic Evolutions just like popping off everything's crazy Scarlet and Violet eras just like taking off I wanted to take a look at some of the other sets some of the sets that were released earlier uh, that weren't as valuable and I wanted to see if any of the hype was moving over towards those sets and I wanted to start off with Paradox Rift now this is a set that I really like I think it has a ton of really great IRs the pull rates are a little easier, released uh, a little earlier. This was the fourth set in the era. But currently, uh, the booster boxes are on the uptick, up 10.5% on the three-month chart. And on the one month, they're only up about 5%, but that's still 5%. If we look at the recent solds, we're seeing 113, 113, a 99, which seems like the outlier, and then all around 113. Now, Paradox Rift has been widely available. These are at distributors are trying to offload these for a while, it seems like. Um, so this kind of makes sense. But that doesn't mean that the set won't uh, do better more long term. Uh, the Pokemon Center ETBs, this is the Iron Valiant uh, version. There's two versions for this set. Uh, up 12% on the three month chart, so getting a little bit of growth. Uh, same thing on the one month, about 12%. And that $60 range, uh, which, you know, that's like MSRP. But uh, we got a few last solds in 6650, 6650, but yeah. Um, so just at least it's seeing some growth, right? We're going to look at some other sets that are uh, growing a little bit more, but I just wanted this, this is a set I like, so I wanted to give it some attention. So uh, this is the Roaring Moon Pokemon Center ETB. It's not doing, it's kind of flat, right? Or down a percent uh, flat on the one month chart. So this one hasn't seen any growth, so it's not like every product is growing, but some singles that are growing uh, from Paradox, the Groudon, uh, up almost 25% in the past three months. Uh, this is a stunning card, it's not really a surprise, kind of like uh, Paldea with the Magikarp, the IR being, uh, you know, one the most expensive card, uh, super stunning card, absolutely love the Pokemon, love the artwork, everything about this card. Even in the past month, it's up almost 17%, it did come up to 62, and it's kind of come down off of that, seems like it's selling more closer to 60, so we got a 58, 58, 50, 48, so 62 down here, so... Uh, Groudon might be cooling down a little bit more. Uh, if we zoom out to the one year here, we'll see. Obviously, 64 was the one year high, so we have not returned to that yet. There is obviously room for that card to get there. It went from 26 up to 64 pretty quickly. So uh, getting back to that one year high would be a good step for this card. Uh, if the boxes continue to go up in price, I could see some of these cards getting some love. Uh, the Roaring Moon. This is a card that I love from the set because I do like the the art and the Pokemon and the scream tails, like screaming in the background. I think it's just a fun card. Special illustration rare. Uh, this card's not doing as well. Not everything is just popping off right now uh, for the set, but yeah, down 8% in the past three months, and but a little bit of a rebound. Uh, up 8% in the past month, so it's kind of rebounding a little maybe. You can see it. It's one year high. It was back here. 110 and it's slowly declined uh, into the 40s however one of the last solds is 58 dollars so maybe the roaring moon is on its way up we talked about this card oh a long time ago in videos the steelix uh this was i really like everything about this card the pokemon the pokemon the artwork he's helping the construction workers right uh this card's getting some love up 20 percent in the past three months and almost 20 percent uh coming in the past month alone we zoom out to the one year it's not at its one-year high. It ran up to 26. We talked about it somewhere in here. I can't remember exactly where it was, but before the big the little boom. Um, but yeah, it looks like uh, this is a similar chart we've seen. Seen with the alt arts, with the special illustration rares, with 151. Usually with big booms, the cards run back down. They set uh, higher lows, and they continue to run from there. So it looks like it bottomed out around $16, $17, and it's on its way up. Uh, just some cool cards from a from a set that I think is a little underrated. Now, talk about underrated sets. Scarlet and Violet base. Now, usually the base uh, sets for each era don't usually do very well. The boxes will do well mm, most of the time, right? But the artwork's not usually very good. I think this is an exception. I think this is probably the best base set um, that we've gotten in a long time, just because I really like all the artworks from this set. Uh, just introducing the new Pokemon, and this was reprinted, right? But 10% gain in the past three months, so it's seeing some growth, right? This was, uh, we'll look at the one year and we'll see how low these were, uh, almost 9% up in the past month. If we go out to the one year, you can see right here, there was a low of $73 uh, last year. Even right here, 78. I mean, 
all day long these were in the 80s at least right so um, it's nice to see this box over a hundred dollars this is going to be one of those sets uh well it's not going to be like you know top tier going to be one of those where once the box prices start to get up and maybe the cards come up a little bit people are going to be like oh yeah i actually like scarlet violet base uh that happens a lot with anything once it once it gains value people just latch onto the monetary value so um yeah but it's nice just on the one year chart 21 percent growth so which not the best but we'll take it um we got the cried on etb it's moving just 13 percent up on the past three months almost six percent in the past month the one year it's only up five percent it was in the 70s down here and it's low it was around 61 62 dollars then we got a card from the set that i really liked this card i thought it was really unique and it's on a it was on a even a bigger tear in september it was up 47 percent, but it's up 35 percent on the three-month chart the drowsy this is a illustration rare uh the one month it's up another 14 percent, and on the one year chart it's looking really good uh 133 percent i believe this card might be tough to grade and i don't know i think psa 10 sales might be up there i'm not sure let me know in the comments if you know what they've been going for i haven't checked in a minute but yeah you could have gotten this card for four dollars and then now it's 12 so um that's some good growth from a sv base card um then there's the curlia this is just one of the other ones that had the most growth not every card was growing right i just picked up some that were um but in the one month chart, almost 15% up. That's pretty good. We zoom out to the one year and it's coming off of a one year high at around $13. Uh, this is one of those cards that from the uh, that evolution going all the way up to the Gardevoir. You can see how the Pokemon grows up with the family. I just really, I just thought it was a cool art. It's a little cutesy. Some people might like not like the cutesy aspect, but um, the Curly is seeing some growth. I mean, 53% in the past year. Could have had this for as low as just under $7. And it's at 12 now most recent though 11 and 12 12 12 so um that seems about right for the curlia then we have temporal forces now temporal forces um you know not one of my favorite sets i didn't really like the uh the augmented versions of the pokemon too much it was okay um but this was the fifth set and that was released and the booster boxes are seeing some growth uh currently 16 percent up in the past three months uh just only three percent in the past month and they're down, obviously, off of pre-release highs. Pre-release highs were at 140. It came down as low as 100. So this was an interesting box because this box never dropped below 100. And now, as you can see, we're we're at a pretty good number, 118. Last sold's 120s, and there's even some 121s down below. So um, some growth there, right? With with all of this happening and there being so much SV hype with surging being like coming out of the gate already being a $140, $150 box. I was just wondering what are people going to do? Are people going to go back uh, to the other sets? So that's why we're kind of taking a look at this. Uh, most of this growth coming recently on a lot of these boxes. We'll take a look at some singles here. The Walking Wake. This is a special illustration rare. 22% up. Uh, it's pretty good growth in the past three months. It was down around 46 and ran up to 60 and now it's kind of come off that a little bit. However, most recent sale, we're seeing a $70 sale on this. Uh, not a ton of copies listed either. 51 currently on TCG Player. Uh, the one year, it's actually up from pre-release. was around 40, ran up to 50, came back down to 30. And then now it's ran back up to that 50, $60-ish range uh, for The Walking Wake. So yeah, that's a card that's had some good growth there from that set. Then uh, possibly one of the most hated sets from the era, uh, besides maybe base um obsidian flames now this is a box that just continues to chug up uh the charizard i mean it's charizard heavy set uh, i do think that the chase charizard card is really good and undervalued i've said that for a while now um in some of my past videos but uh the boxes are doing well we're up to almost 100 we'll just call this we're gonna say 130 obsidian flames boxes are 130 dollars now uh, pretty much all the last sales are 130. I know it's 129.95, but I'm going to call it 130. So 13% growth in the past three months and 3% in the past month. So about to the one year, pretty massive growth. Could have had these on TCG as low as 90, $91. And they've just steadily climbed. We'll take a look at the Charizard from this set. Some people don't like the crowns, whatever. I think this is a unique artwork and I do like 
I, li I like this card a lot. I picked up multiple copies of this card. Uh, I still think that this potentially has some room to run. Uh, this is from the third set that was released. Pull rates were not as difficult back then, so that does play a factor. But almost 40% growth on the past three months, 20% in the past month alone. It went from 43 up to 56 just in the past month. It is not anywhere near its one-year high. Well, I mean, it's, it's kind of getting there. 63 was the one-year high, and the one-year low was 39 So yeah, around $50, $55. So um, this is a cool card. We'll see where it ends up. Uh, with the 151 Charizard just like taking off, it's cooled off a little bit, but I uh, just wondered where if other Charizards will follow. I've had that same thought with Surging Sparks, the new Pikachu, right? Uh, will the other Pikachus follow? because that's going to be an expensive card out the gate. So that's something that I like to keep an eye on as well. Then we have Paldea. Paldea evolved the second set that came out. Easier pull rates, but a big set. And this card, uh, this box was the most expensive for a while till Twilight kind of took that from it. And now Surging has passed it already as well. Um, but this box is kind of stalled out a little, at least on the three month chart, it's just down a little. The one month it's actually down 5%. We'll zoom out to the one year. Uh, so back here, I could have had these boxes all day for $91. They went as high as 143, which is the old MSRP in the 140s. Uh, now they're coming down a little. I still think that this is a pretty strong set. This has the new starter evolution lines with SIRs as the Magikarp IR, right? Um, I think it's a pretty, a pretty solid set, but uh, I'm wondering if it's just getting lost in the sauce with everything else. So some boxes coming up, maybe Paldea is getting lost. I don't know. We'll take a look. Um, the Pokemon Center ETBs are doing really well. Forty percent growth. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't say that that's not good. Uh, one month chart still eighteen percent, coming down maybe just a just a teeny bit right now. Uh, Fifty four percent growth on the past year. Last solds we're seeing 120, 130, 120, 120, 130. So a little bit 120, 130 range, kind of a little bit all over that place. Only 19 of these listed on TCG Player right now. So that's a little interesting, a little low quantity available. Take a look at the singles. Uh, the Magikarp, absolutely love this card. Uh, the artwork, this is the uh, same artist that did the Giratina, just did the Magneton from Surging Sparks. You can tell his style, this art style that he does. Um, I love the Gyarados in the background, obviously. It's kind of the little channel profile logo, but 14% growth in the past three months. It went down to 105 right here was the low and it shot from 105 all the way back up into 130s but most recent like look at these most recent sales 167 150 145 150 so this could be on its way up even more we'll see uh in the last month 26 percent growth so that this card is really rebounded um only 37 copies currently available so i would expect uh, this to continue to go up the magic card see if the Magikarp hype can maybe bring the box prices back up. We'll see people. I don't know. There's a, there's just so much going on in the market right now. Tyranitar, uh, this is another, so this is an illustration rare, uh, similar to like the Growron that we looked at before. This is a very cool card. I think I picked this up, a copy of this at, uh, I don't, it wasn't Collecticon. I think it was the Burbank card show. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I think I had a video on that, but 34% growth, which is pretty good uh, in the past three months and 5% in the past month. Look at the one year. So the this had a big run up in May, went up to 45, went back down all the way to 26. And now we're, we just are coming off that. We're pretty much at the one year high, just a little bit below. Last solds, 44, 44, 40, 45. Uh, so the Tyranitar, once again, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, Paldea evolved. We'll have to keep an eye on the set. Um, there's also, so... I didn't want to touch too deep into 151. It's kind of, uh, things have come up and they've come down just a little and they're kind of leveling off or coming down just a little bit still. Kind of just all around for the most part, right? The Charizard's at 183, like Venusaur and Blastoise are at 72, 73. Um, yeah, so booster bundles are about the same price. So I, there's not too much to really dive into on this set. Specialty set, uh, obviously. So a little different with from the booster box sets. Then there's Twilight, kind of similarly. I think the Greninja's coming come down just a little, but the box prices have stayed pretty much the same. A lot of this has kind of stayed the same. And 
these sets, including, um, okay, so uh, not including Stellar Crown. Stellar Crown, kind of on its way down. Uh, a lot of the cards are on the way down. I think the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle are doing really well, but the Tropagos is sub 100. The boxes are doing okay. So this is um, more traditionally what happens with new sets in the past. They come out and they kind of decline for a little bit. Um, that's more normal. So that's this has kind of changed, right, with um, Surging and Prismatic. So with those sets... Uh, not so obviously not everything from the era is just taken off but a lot is doing pretty good um like i said including paradox uh, i really like that set uh scarlet and violet base right doing doing good as well so uh, but to bring this back to uh, surging and prismatic just the hype so the hype around these sets like prismatic the uh, pokemon center etbs they sold out in like 10 hours okay um surging are really high surging sparks are very high 151 really high so 151 brought tons of people into the market a lot right and even recently it's still bringing people in and people are getting in and finding the barrier the cost to entry to be too high right 151 is too expensive for some people so then they're going to go to the next thing maybe that was surging sparks and then I was, oh shoot, Surging Sparks is too expensive. Surging Sparks is 150 bucks a box, 140. Uh, and then they go, oh, well, this Eevee set just came out. Oh, that sold out, right? And so then they go, well, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Let's let's go down the list, right? A lot of um, Sword and Shield era, if they're discovering Sword and Shield era, is very expensive too. Uh, maybe like Silver Tempest, um, still a pretty decent buy at the Pokemon Center, uh, stuff like that. But they're going to go down the line. And I've used this analogy with kind of like rookie cards in sports they the rookie cards can be very expensive so you go oh i get a second year card oh that's too expensive i'll get a third year card right and this this is going to happen with with some people but then there's also some smart money that's going to be coming in that's going to be like well paradox and sv base and these other sets are steel compared to to where surging and twilight are at um and they obviously they're going to run eventually you just give it enough time right so that's kind of why i just wanted to do a little update video Scarlet and Violet era. We didn't touch on every set. We did not. Um, I don't think we... We didn't do Paldean Fates. Is that the only set we missed? There might have been one more. Anyways, but I just wanted to uh, give you a little update. Stuff that's moving. Uh, some stuff that's not. But overall, it seems like it's kind of ticking up. Uh, which is nice to see a lot of that. Like SV Base and Paradox. It seemed like it was really stagnant for a while. So it's nice to see those sets getting some love. But that is going to do it for this one, guys. Um, if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously enjoyed the content. I do daily Pokemon collecting and investing content, so do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button. I will catch you guys in the next one, and remember, it was never a phase.